Hello! Welcome to Lightland Adventures. This time we have 10 things to do in Madrid on a budget. Woo. Today, as you can see, we are in a different location with a special sleepy guest, Otto. Say hi. Sometimes during Madrid and we receive some messages of what can I do, what places can I go, and we want to prevent you to go to where everyone goes or to do what everyone knows that this is our our personal list and some things are things that people do all the time and other things are pretty unique to us so we hope you enjoy it should we begin yeah let's begin I need the dollar, dollar. Have a walk to El Capricho Park. It's really nice park. It's a bit farther uh, in in the center, but it's not El Retiro where everyone goes. Yeah. And El Capricho is an old park. Has like an old house and bridges and constructions from the past. And if you go in autumn, you can see a little how is it called? Um, where farming and stuff. Oh, a plow. Oh, what like a little. Little garden. Yeah, it's like a little garden with huge uh, pumpkins oh. and it's lovely. It's lovely in summer and it's lovely in spring. You just get the metro and it's really nice to go, relaxing and it's for free. Next on our list are two <laughs> art galleries in Lava Pies. Um, now everyone knows about the Prado and uh, Reina Sofia uh, and of course you can go to them for free but these are some sort of like alternative. alternative ones and they're really cool and the buildings that are in there are pretty interesting. The first one is La Tabacalera, it's free entrance and they change the exposition like every month so you can keep going every often, like often because you will never get bored, there's always something going on there and like looks like a bit destroyed but it's so nice. It's, the personality of the place we we really recommend to go and the second place is called la casa encendida they make so many things in there when they make concerts that they are for free it's impossible to exit because everyone everyone goes there because it's super nice they have a rooftop and there are expositions all around it's quite modern building mm -hmm. but yeah we we really recommend you to go and it's for free too after all that culture, you're sure to build up an appetite. So we recommend a restaurant that is pretty close to these uh, art galleries. Yeah, it's called Los Colores. It's a tiny restaurant with Senegalese food, really cheap and delicious. Uh, near that restaurant, you can find another Senegalese place that is really famous in Lava Pies that is called Baobab. It's nice too, but when you go in, everyone is from Madrid. So mm -hmm. they adapt the food for people in Madrid, but if you go to this other one, Los Colores, everyone inside is African, so that says something about the place. And actually we were recommended this play by our good friend Senegalese, Rama, hi Rama from here, she's back there, and she said that when she wanted to eat something like her home, she was going there, so we really, really recommend, but if you go just order one plate. <laughs> the first time we went, we ordered like two plates and a dessert and we had to get three tuppers home because... Yeah, they give you a lot. <laughs> but it was good, we didn't have to cook anything for lunch the next day. Yeah. Yeah. So good, so cheap and like it's a bit different from your normal food. I mean, Senegalese food is, is pretty goddamn good. Yeah. But it. one recommendation or tip, it's a spicy. It's a spicy. It's a spicy journey. I don't like spicy and I love that food. When I open my mouth and oxygen gets in, I can see fire coming out, but I love it. The ketchup is a spicy, spicy food. It's, it's flavoursome. I wouldn't call yeah. it spicy. Yeah, it's... It warms the soul. The soul food. Yeah, that's I'm true. hungry now. <laughs> we just had lunch. <laughs> Right, what's next on our uh, extensive list? Very Have professional. Everyone loves a picnic, and we found the best spot in Madrid for a picnic. It's in the Parque de las Siete Tetas, or uh, as it's commonly known, I think it's called like Parque Tio Pio or something. Pio Pio. Tio Pio. 
uh, something like that, but it's commonly known in, in Madrid as the seven boobies, las siete tetas, mm -hmm. and the characteristic is that there are seven little mountains that you can climb like in three minutes, but you get amazing views. If you go at sunset, it's amazing, and the good thing is that you don't have to carry all the food if you don't want to. There's a supermarket really, really close to the park, so yeah. you can buy your supplies, enjoy a picnic, enjoy the views, enjoy the sunset, and the most important, the company. Oh yeah, real good. <laughs> no, it's true, in Madrid it's really hard to get a, 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 a point where you can see the city, and this is one of the best. You can see lots of uh, famous buildings, and you can even see the mountains of the community in the background, so yeah, well worth it. Yeah. Plus a picnic, man. I'm bringing them back. It's not too busy, like if you go to Retiro there's going to be a lot of people. Campo Grande? No. Casa de Campo. Mm. There's people, but it's like a Pinar, Pines, so it's not grass. So this place has like everything you want for a picnic. We obviously uh, love a Sunday. What's the best plan for a Sunday? Something that is cheap. El Rastro. We made a video of El Rastro that we will link below so you can have a look and deep know what is in there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can see everything. You can see new things, old stuff. If you love rescue and upcycling, mm -hmm. that's your place because there are amazing things from the 60s. There's always music and the vibes are just lovely. You can have a caña around, tapas. Or the best Cuban food we've had in the city in the bar Santana. If you watch the video, you'll see us go in there. You can get Europa Vieja, uh, uh, yuca frita, mm. and frijoles con arroz. So good. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. You don't like it, Gordo. <laughs> we oh. never took it. He's angry with us for that. But yeah, so good. Check out our video. We'll have it maybe here and maybe below. And don't forget the mojitos. They are delicious mojitos. Yeah, if you want to push the boat out. We always want. Now, like every other city in the world, it can get a bit much. So sometimes you just need to get away from it all. And we found a really nice place you can do that. Yeah, if you want some contact with nature, you just have to get the train, the cercanías, and go to a village called Cercedilla, up in the mountains of Guadarrama in Madrid. And there are lots of hiking routes that you can make, there are actually lots of them. And we just made a few of them. Uh, we actually have a video of that that we will leave the link below and you can see. Uh, you can do it in winter, it's lovely, you can do it in summer because it's lovely too. Spring is the best time probably to do it. Okay. But yeah, it's nice to have a walk, see a lovely village, uh, maybe go in the train that goes even higher to the mountains and you can see some snow. It's lovely to go on a Saturday, on a Sunday, you will for sure enjoy it. Yeah, Thursdaya, once you're there, it just feels like you're in, in another country. It's got these like, I don't know, alpine vibes, like it's a, it's a really nice mountain village and uh, yeah, it's good to like blow off the cobwebs and like just just be in silence. I think that's yeah. hard to come by in Madrid because it's such a loud place. So yeah. A quick one hour train ride away and you're in bliss. Yeah, and one thing that we would like to say in this channel too is if you decide to go to these places and have contact in nature, I mean this and I mean the Seven Boobies Park, mm -hmm. wherever you go, please take it back with you because maybe you didn't notice this, but they are closing natural spaces for our use because we are not using it properly. People is living garbage and people live there and they deserve, and everyone deserves to have a clean, natural space, so please don't be an asshole and take your horrible things back with you. Yeah. Mm. Well, our next point is a midnight walk. Maybe this sounds like, why do it in Madrid when I can go to the beach or do it in somewhere nicer? Well, maybe you discover that Madrid can be camped sometimes. Uh, you can appreciate things better at night, and even if it's cold, you really enjoy to see those streets with different light, different people, probably no one, and see the illuminations of the buildings and you rediscover some parts of the city. So if one day you're like, I don't know what to do, I don't want to go out or I don't have any money, a midnight walk in the city, like 
en castellana to see eh, Reina Sofía o near um, Salamanca Quarter. It's like a really nice um, walk to make to rediscover the city and re fall in love with it yeah. in a different time. Limit the speed you walk as well because during the day it, you sort of feel like you need to walk really fast but if you have a nice slow zonzo as they say in Italy it's just you just see I don't know you appreciate the city more. We did it recently around uh, El Retiro area and yeah it was really nice. It's lovely. It reminded me of that film Midnight in Paris, no? Yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah. Midnight in Madrid. Midnight in Madrid. You copyright that. Next point of this list would be have a coffee, but not in La Plaza Mayor this time. We love going to different places and we want to recommend Plaza de Olavide. It's a really nice square, it's like octagonal I think, mm -hmm. uh, with all the streets coming. There's a park, there's always doggies and the vibes are very nice there. It's lovely to go in spring, to see the natural enjoy your coffee. It's not just having the coffee. You enjoy the coffee, the company, and it's really, really lovely. Yeah, and there's, it's always shaded by these trees, so the light is really nice that spills through. I don't know. And there's always a guy playing an accordion, which gives it a really nice European vibe. And yeah. uh, it, it just seems less tourist trappy compared to Plata Mayor, it's not so rush rush. I think mm -hmm. it's used by people who live in the area and yeah, I like it. It's good. Yeah. Um, if you're a bit cold, yeah. no? And you don't want to be in the terraza, like freezing, Spanish people do it often, you have to know that. But there are other places that you can go and we want to recommend you this little bar that is white with two floors, it's called Alquibar, Arquibar and it's in one of the streets. It's near Plaza España. Yeah, it's really white with old furniture, everything is made with love there. Coffee is really good and the last time I went there was a sausage dog asking for love to everyone and I was really missing Gordo like I'm doing now and it was lovely to have a doggy there. It's so cute, they make amazing cakes and the brunch is very good too. And our last thing to do is Matadero. You know that we made a video that we were covering a market. There are lots of markets going on, but even if there's nothing going on, Matadero could be a really, really nice place to go. See some art, um, sometimes cinema, expositions. There is a greenhouse that is really lovely and having a walk there is really, really nice. Yeah, it's like... Um... An art gallery where the space is sometimes better than the actual art. <laughs> I really love the building. Um, so yeah, even if there's no nothing that interests you, just go and see these old uh, abattoir buildings. They're really cool. Yeah. And they've kept some of the like sliding doors and other stuff. So yeah. The industrial design. It and it's lovely. Like the mayor house made this space because. They could have used it for commercial uses and... Yeah, flats. Yeah, but they decided that maybe people can use it, so... It's a really good thing that everyone should use, so more places do it for the citizens. Let that be a lesson to you, Edinburgh City Council. Build stuff for people. <laughs> build stuff for the community and then tourists will come. You don't have to build everything to serve a purpose for money, money, money. There's things above that. Yeah. You listening? Johnny, <laughs> hijo. <laughs> well, those were our 10 things, 10 plans that you can do on a budget mm -hmm. in Madrid. But anyway, we want to recommend that this is like, you can do it anytime, but there's always, always, every single weekend, something going on, some market, some exposition, some art in the streets, in Malasaña, Pintasaña, there's like lots, lots of things to do. So if you go to Madrid or if you live in Madrid, we recommend you to take part on these things because there, there's always something going on and for sure it's not going to disappoint you. So yeah, enjoy the, your city and if there's nothing going on, you can always do one of the things that we propose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you do try one of the things you propose and you enjoy it, leave us a comment. Yeah, and if you have some favorite places or plants that we didn't mention and maybe you we could like it, we would love you to read us a commentary so you know, uh, I mean, we know and we can try it. Well, that's that. I hope you enjoyed it. 
And if you miss us, don't forget to um, follow us on Instagram, that we every day post things and stories. Our Facebook, that we post lots of videos and information. Twitter, and always subscribe. Always. Always. <laughs> bye bye now. <laughs> See you next week. <sighs>